Step back in time and join the beloved Walton family as they navigate the struggles of the Great Depression and World War II in the heartwarming TV drama, The Waltons. For nine unforgettable seasons, audiences followed the family's journey of love, perseverance, and family values. But have you ever wondered what happened to the actors who brought these iconic characters to life? In this video, we'll reveal the real names and ages of the cast and take a look at how they've changed over the years. From their time on set to where they are today, this is a must-watch for any fan of the beloved series. Watch till the end of this video to see the Waltons cast then and now. Richard Thomas The show was mostly about John Boy Walton, who keeps a diary about everything that happens in his family. Earl Hamner Jr.'s rural childhood was the original inspiration for the show. He grew up in the middle of nowhere in Schuyler, Virginia. Richard left the show after the fifth season, but that didn't stop people from all over the world loving him. Thanks to John Boy's popularity, Thomas was able to land a few other offers as a result of his character's rise to prominence through the course of the show, including the first three parts of the Roots miniseries, which came out in 1979. Richard Thomas has been acting successfully ever since, most recently on two episodes of NCIS New Orleans. So don't think for a second that he ever went away. And Richard Thomas is still working as an actor. He has roles in movies and TV shows like Law and & Order and Billions. Between 2013 and 2016, Thomas played FBI Special Agent Frank Gadd on The Americans. He has been back on NCIS New Orleans as Deputy Director Van Cleef, and on Tell Me Your Secret, says Bodie Lord. He also did the voiceover for The Walton's Homecoming. Thomas was also in the fourth and last season of Ozark. Thomas has a big family, just like the one he played on The Waltons. Not only does he have triplets, but he also has two other kids. He is now 71 years old. Ellen Corby Ellen Corby played the part of Esther Grandma Walton. After the television series came to an end, Ellen Corby went on to feature in all of the films based on the Waltons that were produced through the 1980s. She won three Emmys and one Golden Globe. She died in 1999 when she was 87 years old. She was on the show for five years. She went through hard times as a young actress, which made her the perfect choice to play a tough but sweet grandma. She would beg for work every day from sunrise to sunset in front of RKO Studios. After a few weeks, she finally landed a job as a script reader. She really did work her way up from the parking lot to the Emmys, where she won three awards for her work on The Waltons. Overall, Ellen appeared in 265 movies and TV shows. She was a real force on television, appearing in everything from Lassie to Hawaii Five-0. But she also showed up in a few movies. When she was just starting out, she had a small, uncredited part in It's a Wonderful Life, Will Gear. Will Gear played the role of Zebulon Zeb Walton. Will Gear played his role until season six, when he passed away in 1978, while the Waltons was still in production. The eldest in the family, Gear had been a Hollywood powerhouse for decades already, acting since 1932. And boy, 40 years after his first credit, Gear struck gold, because along with the creation of the Waltons, he co-starred alongside Robert Redford in the film Jeremiah Johnson. His role as Grandpa Walton awarded Gear much deserved praise, as he was also nominated for six Emmys and won one. But boy, did he have an impact on that show. He would often contribute ideas of his own to the show, one instance being in the episode The Star, where Grandpa saw a falling star. Gear proposed using a Mark Twain line, and showrunners agreed. In the episode, Grandpa says, I came in with Haley's Comet, and I'll go out with Haley's Comet. Cammy Cotler Cammy Cotler played youngest daughter Elizabeth Walton, but she turned her back on acting and became a school principal instead. We wonder what the students think when they find out their principal is a former TV star. Cotler had some really huge acting prospects. Her talent was widely talked about and appreciated. Around the time The Waltons was created, she was in all 13 episodes of a Gary Marshall-created TV show, Me and the Chimp. Cotler was the founding principal of the Environmental Charter Middle School in Gardena, California, and now she's Director of Strategic Initiatives at Environmental Charter Schools, according to her bio. 
IMDb, meanwhile, reports that Kotler had an uncredited cameo in co-star Mary Elizabeth McDonough's Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane Hallmark movie. Luckily, one of those shows took off. Despite that, she quit the acting biz after appearing in the final Waltons TV movie in 1997. Her life really came full circle as she decided to go to college and later was a teacher at a school near Schuyler, Virginia, the real Waltons Mountain. She's not gearing up for a Hollywood comeback, but is instead fulfilling her sisterly duties. That's because her Waltons sister, Mary McDonough, actually wrote the novel that turned into the Hallmark flick. Sisters have to stay together. Cammie also deserves some credit as the organizer for the family reunion at the time of the series' 40th anniversary. She is now 57 years old. Judy Norton Judy Norton, who played Mary Ellen Walton, got naked for Playboy magazine in 1985. Today, the beautiful actress runs a restaurant chain with her husband and is a vocal member of Scientology. The oldest daughter of the clan, Mary Ellen Walton, played by Judy Norton, was universally loved. The Waltons changed her life forever and was a second family. Her role was greatly admired as audiences loved seeing her play the nurse to perfection. Perhaps this is why post-Waltons, Judy decided to do a full 180 as she posed nude for the August 1985 issue of Playboy in a bid to shed her wholesome family image. Perhaps it worked, because along with John Boy, she has had the most acting success of any of the Walton children. Norton wrote and starred in the 2018 thriller Inclusion Criteria, alternatively titled Nowhere to Hide. And she appeared opposite other former child stars, including Dean McDermott and Danny Pintaro in the web series The Quarantine Bunch. She is now 64 years old. We most recently saw her in a few projects in 2022, including the film Motivation. She's also a talented singer if you ever get a chance to see her perform. Mary Elizabeth McDonough In 2011, Mary Elizabeth McDonough published her book Lessons from the Mountain, which is about her time playing Aaron on the Waltons. The second oldest daughter turned her Waltons' success into a lifelong endeavor. The pilot movie was her very first acting audition, and 10 years later, she was an experienced Walton and actress. McDonough continued to work in Hollywood and had roles on The Love Boat, Will and & Grace, and a sizable role in The New Adventures of Old Christine. What makes her even more remarkable is the fact that she continues to work devotedly despite suffering from lupus and immune disorder. In 2018, she took on a very personal and triumphant project, as she turned her novel into a Hallmark movie, Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane, in which she also co-starred. We also saw her in 2022's The Contested Plains. Nowadays, McDonough continues to be active in the media, appearing on different radio and internet shows. She is now 61 years old. Ralph Waite and Michael Learned They were exemplary parents and a super team. Olivia Walton and her husband John raised their kids in a strict but affectionate way. Still, their kids' dreams and career aspirations had them worried on a regular basis. But if you love your children, how could you not be worried? Ralph Waite Ralph Waite, who played John Walton Sr., kept acting after his time on the Waltons. His career lasted until 2010. On February 13, 2014, he passed away at the age of 85. Waite was perhaps the most successful actor from this timeless TV series. Although he didn't begin acting until age 30, he began gaining work on the stage in New York City. After a move to LA, he landed a few small roles, including one in the incredible film Cool Hand Luke. After that, it was a busy acting schedule until he landed the role of John Walton Sr., which changed his life as well as ours forever. Ralph was struggling with alcohol addiction and has stated that the role of the pleasant and doting father John helped him to overcome his demons. He joined AA and remained sober for the rest of his days. After the Waltons, Waite had numerous TV shows and movies lined up for him. He had learned to direct on the set of the Waltons, where he directed 16 episodes. It's pretty interesting how similar he and Michael Landon of Little House on the Prairie were. Both struggled with alcohol, and both learned how to direct TV while on the set of a show in which they also championed as the parental leads. If you haven't checked out our other videos, we have a great Little House Then and Now, 
as well as a Michael Landon deep dive. Back to the family at hand. After hanging up his John Walton Sr. shoes, Ralph never stopped acting for even a second. He was multi-talented as he worked as an actor, director, and even a writer for projects spanning almost four decades. Waite died in 2014 after a five-decade acting career. Some of his last on-screen roles included Gibbs' father on NCIS, Booth's grandfather on Bones, and Father Matt on Days of Our Lives. Ralph also tried his luck in politics by running for Congress three times, as he stated he was, quote, ready to contribute something on the national level, end quote. He was a good man who did not take credit for much, even when he deserved it. Michael Learned The mother of the Waltons clan story is similar to that of the father's. She was working in San Francisco doing stage acting at ACT until a television producer saw her work and cast her in his new family series. You guessed it, The Waltons. The actress was originally billed in the credits as Miss Michael Learned, as the name is usually aligned with men. She grew up on a rustic farm, being the eldest of six sisters, which led to her believability as the matriarch of this mountain family. Even though she was only 11 years older than Richard Thomas, who played her oldest child, John Boy, on The Waltons, she really anchored the show as Olivia Walton. Her performance garnered widespread respect and landed her three Emmy Awards. So, you would think by this time people would know her name. Well, think again. Michael Learned was given the name Michael because her family had firmly counted on having a boy. When their child turned out to be a girl, her parents decided to give her a male name anyway. Like many of her former Waltons co-stars, the actress who played Olivia continued acting after the show. Along with many other TV parts, Learned had a recurring role in Scrubs and also appeared in the movie Afterlife in 2014. Since 1988, Learned has been happily married to her third husband, lawyer John Doherty. As a result of her hard work, she was in high demand after the Waltons' success. She made appearances in Gunsmoke and later came back to TV with Nurse, for which she took home a fourth Emmy Award win. In 2010, Learned played Shirley Smith on General Hospital, and the following year, she played Catherine Chancellor on The Young and the Restless. Her most recent acting credit was in the Netflix horror original Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story, as Dahmer's mother in 2022. At 83 years old, she voiced her support for nurses and caregivers amid the coronavirus pandemic, saying, quote, I'm very sad for the people who have died and for the families. I'm proud of the nurses and caregivers who are getting the praise they so richly deserve now and always, end quote. John Walmsley Since he was a little lad, Jason Walton has been a musician who puts his whole heart and soul into his work. He subsequently begins to play at the Dew Drop Inn, which his mother does not approve of since she is concerned about her son and feels it is not the suitable environment for him. After his time playing Jason on The Waltons, John Walmsley continued working as an actor and voice actor. He also went on to begin a career as a composer. Now, Walmsley is considered a stage and studio veteran. This multi-instrumentalist has been focusing on his music career recently. In 2017, he released his first solo CD, Going to Clarksdale, inspired by a trip to the Mississippi Delta, as well as, quote, the songs and artists I grew up listening to, and the lyrics that have infused and often describe my own life journey, end quote, as he explained on his website. You'll remember Jason Walton for his musical additions to the show. John Walmsley, the second oldest brother in the Waltons, had a beautiful voice that helped his popularity on the show, and one that he has continued to nourish today. Perhaps he was influenced by playing alongside Merle Haggard in an episode of The Waltons. John also performed a tribute to Merle at the 45th anniversary Walton weekend. Fun fact! He also originated the Christopher Robin voice for the Winnie the Pooh cartoons. His last acting credit was back in 2009 and 2010, when he lent his voice to two Christmas TV movies. Most of his focus has been on his musical career. He has composed and published around 13 albums and is now 66 years old. Eric Scott while Eric Scott, who played Ben Walton, appeared in series like Bewitched and The Fall Guy after the Waltons ended, 
he never managed to really get a career going. He is now married and has two children. This third youngest child was known for being mutinous on the show. If you smelled trouble, you knew it was most likely Ben behind it. Scott, who now lives in LA, no longer acts regularly, but is a part of all Walton's reunions, including a Walton Easter in 1997. Perhaps due to the work ethic taught in the Waltons, Eric has really created a life for himself outside of the spotlight. He presides over a family of three and runs Chase Messengers LLC, a parcel delivery service based in Encino, California. Scott once worked for the same business as an assistant. He is now 64 years old. David W. Harper Just like his former co-star Eric Scott, David Harper, who played Jim Bob, unfortunately did not have much success in acting after the Waltons. This led to his decision to quit the business. However, he still honors his time on the show with appearances at various events. The youngest boy of the Walton family was also the most ingenious one as he once built a car from scratch. David's acting career began with the Waltons and didn't reach much farther than that, with one exception. He landed a small but amazing role in the 1985 comedy Fletch starring Chevy Chase. After working at a variety of jobs, he went to school to study business. David still lives near Hollywood, but away from the studios, as he is a very private and spiritual man. But when asked if he would like to act in movies again, David did reply, maybe. He is reportedly writing an autobiography about his time as Jim Bob. As of 2019, Harper was an art dealer in Los Angeles, according to the Daily Mail. Not so coincidentally, he once worked as a driver for former co-star Eric Scott's delivery service. He is now 61 years old. Before we end, I know you have some questions. Let me answer them for you. Are the Waltons based on a true story? Well, the Waltons were based on real people, the real-life Hamner family of Schuyler, Virginia. How did the Waltons end? In the final episode of The Waltons, John Boy goes to New York to pursue his writing career, but finds that his manuscript has been rejected and returns home. Who has passed away from The Waltons? Ellen Corby, Will Gear, and Ralph Waite have passed away. Well, that was a wonderful trip down Memory Mountain. I can't believe it's been over 40 years since we watched the Walton series end. Who was your favorite character on the Waltons? Let us know below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.